Do you hate your job? Lots of people do. <laughs> if so, it's time to find what it is that you really love. Um, I meet many people who hate their job or they feel really stuck and stagnant in their job. And guess what? It's something that happens to most of us in our career. Or perhaps it is that you face redundancy. Perhaps it's by choice or maybe you've been forced to um, get to this point or, 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 or events have just happened whereby you no longer love your job or you've fallen out of love. It happens all the time in all sorts of different relationships. The question is, what is it you want to do? What is it that feels um, true to you? What is it that resonates with you? And you know what? In all the time that we've um, done what we've done, we can often lose track with that. So the first thing I'd say is give yourself some space. It might be that you need to take some time out. It might be that you want to take a holiday, or it might be that you just need to give yourself just some time where you can go to have a walk, um, uh, you know, in a, you know where it's quiet in greenery, get back to nature. There's something very grounding about that, and that will be very, very important for you to do. I think the next thing I'd uh, invite you to do is to write down a list of all the things that you're passionate about. Don't um, make that limited just to career. It should involve career things and other things. Maybe you're passionate about people. Maybe you're passionate about technology. Maybe you're passionate about making things, um, creating things, music, art, whatever it might well be, technology, the environment, whatever. Write a list of all of those things that, it is that you're profession, uh, um, um, proficient at, good at, passionate about. Link to that, do write this very specific list of what all your skills are and what all your accomplishments are. You know what, in all the time that you've been um, involved in your career, sometimes we can strangely lose track of all of our skills and accomplishments. Be exhaustive, write a really long list of all the accomplishments, including there might be awards that you've won, um, uh, new business that you've won for your company, things that you've achieved, um, programs that you've run, staff that you've mentored, whatever it might well be. List all of those things that you've achieved in your current job and in your career. I think the next thing that I'm going to invite you to do is to begin to talk to people. Very often, again, when we're at a point of career change or it's about to happen, we become quite isolated. There's nothing more important than your network and knowing good people. So um, one of the things I'd ask you to do is um, um, go and talk to all the people who it is that you know, love and respect. Talk to them um, a little bit about themselves, about the journey that they've been on. Talk particularly to those people who love what they do, whether it is that they run a, they're in a career or that they're in business. Ask them how it is that they found themselves in their life and in their career. They'll enjoy this whole process. It might be very valuable and there'll be all sorts of clues for you as well. The probability is that they've gone through all the same kind of um, heart-wrenching and mind-numbing kind of stuff that you might well be going through at the moment. And they will be really, really valuable. Many of them will be able to give you some very useful pointers and, uh, and advice. Um, uh, I think you also need to listen very much to yourself. What is it that you want to do? Um, you might want to list down all of the things that it also that, that it is that you're that you're that you're skilled at all of those particular and all the possible careers that you might be interested in. So between this and between all the conversations, you're going to get quite a lot of information. It might also be very useful for you to go out and network with people. There are some professional networks. You might even be a member of a professional networking group, but you may not have needed to until now. But I'd really encourage you to go out there and network, find groups. Again, talk to these people. Where do they go? Where do they network? There might be business networking groups. There might be professional networking groups. Very often when I'm coaching individuals um, who are at that point of career change, I encourage them to go out there and meet people. Meet people you've used to work with in the past, meet people who it is that you know. Use these particular things. Use the social and professional um, networks that are out there to connect with people. This is going to be invaluable because this might give you all sorts of thoughts. There might be people from there that you want to connect with, have a coffee with or have lunch with. And this may well lead you to all sorts of useful stuff. Be really giving in that whole process. It's a two-way process. It's not just an opportunity of you spewing everything out there. It's an opportunity for you to share as well. Um, find out where they're at, what it is that, that might be of use to them. It can be a very powerful two-way particular kind of process. Through all this kind of stuff, you're going to get lots more information. And it might be you might want to add to this reading some books about career change, reading some books about how to present yourself and all the rest of it. This is all part of that particular kind of um, a process of finding out what it is that you're wanting to do. I think then what you're probably going to do is come up with a bit of a, a strategy. That strategy is probably going to involve usually updating things like your CV. Make sure that your CV shines. All those accomplishments that you wrote down before, guess what? That's how it is that your CV um, 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 should look when you're going through row by row. You should really be picking out the key achievements, the key things that you've actually done. So make sure it's a very dynamic document and start off with a dynamic phrase about who it is that you are at the top of the particular document. And there will be other people who will be able to help you with, with those CVs. Keep the CV short, sharp and punchy. 
Remember the, jo the job of the CV is to get you shortlisted for the job interview. When it comes to job interview, um, I've got a separate YouTube video about that, so feel free to, to look that one up and that may well be able to help you as well as um, perhaps going through that interview um, and practicing some interviews with people it is that you know, like and trust. Um, but it might well be that from this whole process, it might be that you're going for a more senior job or it might be that you're going for a completely different career change. If it's a completely different career change, well, how long is it going to take? It might be involved some retraining, um, some new skills, going back to university or, or going on some professional development and so on. That in itself can be very, very enriching. Perhaps also you found that you might want to volunteer or what have you. Maybe you've decided that you might want to give yourself time out. All of these things are within your gift. But at the same time as this, there may well be some practical things that you might need to look at. How much money do you need to make? And what's your survival guide? How much money do you have saved? And that will help you decide whether it is that you want to take a little bit of time out. It might help you decide you want to volunteer. It might make you want to decide you want to work part time. Do you want to make full time? In my own particular case, when I was first made redundant, I decided that I didn't ever want to work full time for anybody again. Unfortunately, it's a vow that I've kept to. Um, I used it as an opportunity to volunteer. I volunteered for the Samaritans. I used it as an opportunity to pursue my real passion, which is singing and performing. Singing and performing led me into uh, uh, taking a real interest in personal development. So I retrained to become a life coach, a business coach, and a corporate coach as I am now. So I trained as a coach. Um, and that whole journey took me to where it is that I am now. And very often when I find when I'm coaching people one-to-one -one, is that all those different ingredients of all the different things I did in all my past jobs, including the ones that I hated, it all come together in the, the job that is ideal for you. And you may well find that it's the, the case is the same for you. But I, um, I wish you all the best. I really do encourage you to take that time out, to talk to people it is that you know, love and trust, to come up with a plan, to polish up your CV, and just to be yourself. When it comes to going out there and meeting people, when it goes to, it comes to um, uh, going to networking events, when it goes to meeting job agents or going for a job interview, be yourself shine, be personable, be very proactive, be you. That is your biggest selling point. Um, uh, don't underestimate that, don't underplay that, um, and be prepared to sell all of the things that it is, um, sell all your, your selling points, all the accomplishments. Don't leave it for somebody to, to prize out of you. You really should be sharing those things and be passionate. Let those people know when you're in an interview, when you're meeting them, what it is you're passionate about. That is incredibly infectious and that is powerful and that's going to give you the edge over lots of other people who may not be passionate about what they're doing. I wish you all the best with your um, career change, with your career shifts, and I hope you find doing what it is that you were naturally born and shaped to do. Wishing you all the best. Take care.